Unit 8, Day 5, Polygons in the Coordinate Plane. We're not actually learning anything new, but we're going to see how to verify a certain quadrilateral to be one of our special ones in the coordinate plane using the properties. So here we have three formulas, distance, midpoint, and slope, and we've used them all year long. And here we're going to talk about when to use it. Use distance to determine whether sides are congruent or diagonals are congruent. We use the midpoint formula to determine whether determine the coordinates of the midpoint of a side and whether diagonals bisect each other. Use the slope formula to determine whether opposite sides are parallel, diagonals are perpendicular, and sides are perpendicular. And remember, parallel lines have the same slope where perpendicular lines have opposite reciprocal slopes. Now the question is how do we classify polygons in the coordinate plane? The very first question, what properties are essential? So we need to know all of the properties of the parallelogram rhombus, rectangle, and square as we talked about in day two and day three. The next step is which formulas do we need to prove each property? So here I've listed each of the formulas that we'll need and how many times you actually have to use it. Now some of these are not possible. All of the ones dealing with angles that are not right angles so opposite angles congruent, consecutive angles supplementary, and then diagonals bisecting opposite angles. Those we actually can't calculate when they're on the coordinate plane, so we're not going to be using those. The last question you have to ask yourself, what is the fastest way to determine the answer? So here I've just kind of pointed out, when you're trying to prove something to be a parallelogram, using the midpoint formula two times will show that the diagonals bisect each other. That is the fastest way. For a rhombus, calculating the slope two times to determine whether the diagonals are perpendicular is fastest, and for a rectangle, calculating slope two times to determine whether the four angles are all congruent right angles is the fastest. So let's take a look at some example problems. In this problem, what we need to do is classify the triangle by its sides. So remember, scalene means no congruent sides isosceles means two congruent sides, and equilateral means all three are congruent sides. So the first thing that we want to do is we actually want to find the coordinates of each of these points. A is 0, 1, B is 4, 4, and C is going to be 7, 0. Okay. Now, in order to decide whether these side lengths are going to be the same or if they're going to be all different, we need to find the length of each of these. And to find length, we want to use the distance formula. So from the page, I think two pages ago, if you don't remember the distance formula, x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. Okay, This is what we're going to be using. So let's find the first side together, just in case you forgot how to do this. If we take AB, we just want to use these coordinates. So our x2 is 4 minus 0 squared plus y2 is 4 minus y1 squared. And then we're just going to simplify. 4 minus 0 is 4, 4 minus 1 is 3, and then we get 16 plus 9, 16 plus 9 is 25, and lastly, the square root of 25 is equal to 5. So this is our answer for the length of AB. That's 5. Now I want you to pause and then find the length of segment BC and CA and then check back with me. So hopefully you found that BC is equal to 5 and that AC is equal to 7.1. Now when you look at the side lengths, we have AB is equal to 5 and BC is equal to 5. Since we have two congruent sides and a third side that's different, we have an isosceles triangle. Now when we're looking at this problem, we have to classify the triangle by its angles. That means we want to know whether it's ob obtuse, acute, or right. Now, this is the exact same triangle as on the page before. So we just want to take the information from the page before when we did all the work. So we found that AB was 5, BC was 5, and CA, I'm going to write this in the radical form, not the decimal, is 5 square root of 2, because that's going to alter our answer.
you always want to use the exact answer when possible. So we have these lengths, and in order to determine whether it's an obtuse, acute, or right triangle, we have to think about what we did in Unit 7 regarding the Pythagorean Theorem converse. So that was when we used c squared box a squared plus b squared. Now remember, c is always the longest side, and that's going to be 5 times the square root of 2. And this whole quantity is going to be squared, box, and then 5 squared plus 5 squared. So when we do this, we have to square the 5, 25, square the square root of 2, which is 2, 5 squared is 25, plus 25, 25 times 2 is 50, 25 plus 25 is 50. So what we find here is that c squared is equal to a squared plus b squared. Since it's equal, we have a right triangle. In this problem, they want us to classify the parallelogram. They want to know if ABCD is a rhombus. So we actually already know that this is a parallelogram, meaning opposite sides are congruent, opposite sides are also parallel, opposite angles congruent, consecutive angles are supplementary, and the diagonals bisect each other. So we just want to look at the special properties of a rhombus. In one of the first couple slides, we talked about all the different properties and the formulas we need, and we said that we can test whether the diagonals are perpendicular, and then that is the fastest way to determine whether this is a rhombus. So the big question is, is AC, that diagonal, perpendicular to BD? So to test whether they're perpendicular, we're actually going to find the slope. Now remember, slope formula is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So first, let's find the slope of segment AC. We have y2 is 5 minus 0 over 4 minus a negative 2. Now remember, this becomes a positive. So we have 5 over 6. So the slope of diagonal AC is 5 over 6. Now I want you to pause and find the slope of segment BD, that diagonal, and then come back and check with me. So hopefully you found that the slope of diagonal BD is negative 3 over 2. When you compare the two slopes, they are opposites, one's positive and one's negative, but they're not reciprocals. Because they're not opposite reciprocals, the two diagonals are not perpendicular, and therefore this is not a rhombus. In this one, we want to classify the parallelogram and we want to know if ABCD is a rectangle. So we want to talk about the special properties of a rectangle. Now there are two that we can talk about. One is that the diagonals are congruent, and the second is that we have four congruent 90 degree angles. Now for each of these, for diagonals being congruent, the question is, is RT congruent to QX? So you're going to use the distance formula. Now for this one, to check if four congruent right angles, we actually just need to make sure that one of the angles is 90 degrees. So the question, you want to take two of the sides that intersect and see if QR is perpendicular to RS. And for this one, we're going to use slope just like we did on the page before. So I want you to pause, pick which method you want to use, whether you want to use distance formula twice to see if the diagonals are congruent, or use slope twice to see if QR and RS are perpendicular to make this a 90 degree angle. Then check back with me and see if you got it right. So if you use distance formula, hopefully you found RT equals 5 and QS equals the square root of 29. Now when you compare 5 and square root of 29, they are not equal to each other. So that means that the diagonals RT and QS are not congruent. If you use slope, then hopefully you found the slope of QR is positive 3 over 1 and the slope of RS is negative 1 over 4. 
Again, if you compare 3 over 1 and negative 1 over 4, they are opposites, but they are not reciprocals. So that means that QR and RS are not perpendicular. That means that angle R is not a right angle, so this cannot be a rectangle. Now in this problem, we're classifying the parallelogram by graphing. So you need to determine whether it's a rhombus, rectangle, square, or none. So the very first step is we want to actually plot each of these points. So here I plotted A, B, C, and D. Next thing we want to do is connect the segments. So now we have our parallelogram A, B, C, D, and we need to decide is it going to be rhombus, rectangle, or square. So we know that it's going to be a square if it is both a rectangle and a rhombus. So first, let's do our check for the rhombus. For the rhombus, we said the fastest is check to see if the diagonals are perpendicular. So again, our question is, is diagonal AC perpendicular to diagonal DB? So we want to find the slopes. The slope of AC is going to be equal to negative 3 minus 1 over 2 minus negative 2, which gives us negative 4 over 4, and that equals negative 1. Now, the slope of DB, that's negative 5 minus 3 over negative 4 minus 4, which gives us negative 8 over 8, oh, over negative 8, and that gives us a positive 1. So when you look at negative 1 and positive 1, those are opposite reciprocals, so this is a rhombus. Next, we want to check to see if this is a rectangle. Now, to get some practice in, let's use our distance formula, and we'll see if the diagonals are going to be congruent. So the question is, is segment AC, that diagonal, congruent to segment DB, that diagonal? So when we're calculating AC, the length of that, we want to use our distance formula. We have negative 2 minus 2 squared, plus 1 minus negative 3 squared, and then that equals negative 4 squared plus 4 squared. This gives us square root of 16 plus 16, and then that gives us the square root of 32. Then, when we find the distance of diagonal DB, we're going to take negative 5 minus 3 squared plus negative 4 minus 4 squared equal to negative 8 squared plus negative 8 squared and that gives us the square root of 64 plus 64 and that gives us the square root of 128. Now when you compare 132 and square root of 128 those are not equal to each other so this is not a rectangle. Now, if we know that this parallelogram is a rhombus but not a rectangle, that means it definitely cannot be a square. So our conclusion is that the parallelogram is just a rhombus. This is the same type of problem, but I've given you different coordinates. What I want you to do is pause and then plot the points, work through this, do exactly what we did on the page before with our new coordinates, and see what you get as an answer. And then check back with me and see if you got it right. Hopefully the first thing you did was plot the points and then connect the segments to find parallelogram A, B, C, D on the graph. Then hopefully you tested whether segment BD is perpendicular to segment AC, the two diagonals, and then when you find the slope of BD is negative 1 fourth and the slope of AC is 4 over 1, those are opposite reciprocals so we have a rhombus. Next, hopefully you checked whether diagonal AC is congruent to diagonal BD to see if it's a rectangle. Hopefully you got the length of AC is square root of 70 and the length of diagonal BD is the square root of 70. Since those are equal, we can say that it is a rectangle because the diagonals are congruent. Now, the very last step, since it is a rhombus and it is a rectangle, it is a square. So our most specific name for this parallelogram, ABCD, is square. That's all for now. 
I know there's a lot of stuff going on, but make sure you look over everything and know your properties and which formulas to use when. See you next class.